Good afternoon, ladies. It's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Rajal Chattopadhyay. Knowing her personally since last 10 years, I fall short of words to describe her persona, actually. She is intelligent, hardworking, dedicated, systematic, efficient, and sophisticated professionally. She is an adorable and affectionate daughter and mother, as well as a down-to-earth and reliable friend. In short, she is a woman of substance, both professionally and personally. She was born and brought up in Vadodara. After completing graduation, she shifted to Mumbai and then never looked back. With her dedication, commitment and leadership skills, she successfully held various executive positions before being appointed as the vice president and global head of ETOS. In 2020, she founded Gravitas for amplifying leadership impact and agility through coaching and mentoring. She is also an active member of Forbes Expert Panel, Forbes Women's Forum, and Harvard's Business Review Advisory Council. During these 20 years of exceptional professional growth, she also gathered financial awareness, skills, attitude, and behavior necessary to make right financial decisions at the right time to get sustainable returns while mitigating risks. She now aims to enable women to break glass ceiling on professional front and help them gain financial security and emotional independence. So let's welcome Rajal Chattopadhyay, the president of Pixi, Gujarat Coaching Council, and chairperson of Women's Committee of BMA to enrich us with insights from her 20 years journey to successful investments. Rajal. For your introductions, very nice of you to just introduce me. Uh, now we are coming on the end of this session, but I request all of you, uh, if you are okay, we can extend uh, till 4.30 and uh, you can type in your questions in the chat box and uh, myself and Sonal uh, will answer that those questions. So before that, very important thing I just want to share with you is that we are a very, a very, very uh, encouraging uh, um, uh, sponsor for this event. And the uh, sponsor name is, you can just see, uh, Mr. Tushar Wagela. And he uh, was kind enough to acknowledge that this is a very important uh, for uh, women. And uh, he really proactively just offered us without even uh, much nudging also. So I'll just introduce uh, Tushar Wagela. He's an investment advisor. And uh, um, he's got his own firm called uh, Sarvam Investments. Uh, he's uh, in this field of uh, advising uh, on the financial matters and investment for last 20 years in Baroda. And he has got a very well seasoned and very, very knowledgeable team with him. Uh, so far, he has been really provided services to almost 700 families in Baroda and across. Um, he's recognized as an MDRT. And this MDRT is uh, like a million dollar. Uh, Roundtable, uh, that is the international organizations of financial professionals across the world. And he's a part of a uh, very active member of that. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, he's a Shakti Veer agent doing almost 100 policies since beginning of the LIC agency. So I really pass my special thanks to uh, Tushar Bhai and uh, hope to see him in person uh, whenever I think we can have a chance to encounter with him. So thank you very much, Tushar Bhai. Uh, with this, uh, uh, like uh, I just mentioned to you, um, my session is about uh, what are my learnings, what are my takeaways of uh, my uh, successful uh, journey of investment of last 20 plus years. And as a part of that, um, I got a lot of questions come, come to me and some questions are from uh, people who have registered some questions that come beforehand up front to answer. And I told that during my session, I'll answer. And some questions, I think, please feel free to uh, keep on pouring your uh, questions on the chat box. And I think uh, we will uh, keep this uh, uh, workshop till 4.30 with the permission of uh, Vice President and President of the BMA. And uh, please uh, keep on uh, asking questions on the chat box. So one question. I got a lot of 35 questions with me right now, uh, so far for la in last two days. But I'll answer only one question in immediately, and then I think uh, we, I'll take we'll take some other questions. So one question I think I'll take is from a, a lady who is 85 years old, very smart, 
very very uh, progressive minded and uh, she is a mother of my very close friend anupama kapoor and uh, she asked me question is that that uh, um, i'll just read the question first and then i'll answer the question it's very interesting question i think she has asked so she's asked that rajul uh, when we look almost 15 to 20 years back okay what made you take to investing first uh, taking own decision second managing your own funds third when it was uncommon for women uh, to be doing that i think around 20 plus years before that's the first question she asked and then she's followed that i think of what motivated you for me to start investing that the second and very a uh, very very challenging question she asked me is about did you face any challenges especially from your husband and others when you decided to take your financial decisions in your own hand so it's a very very uh, like uh, uh, sondal is also telling a thumb in thumbs up to me because we both are women in this profession she is advising and i am investing and uh, so uh, this this are the, i think three questions coming from a 85 years lady and heads up to her i think uh, thinking about this so first i'll ask uh, answer first question and uh, why it, uh, like uh, what was that that triggered me to a uh, uh, decision to take investment of my own so it is got a two factors one is about uh, uh, um, circumstances and second is uh, about the mindset so first i'll talk about the circumstances like uh, when i was in bombay just pass out from iit bombay and uh, i was doing my job and then i met my husband and uh, we both uh, when they started to marry uh, within 6 months uh, we did not did not have a home to stay and you know bombay bombay is a very expensive place to even buy a home so then we decided to rent very small flat which only we could afford that time and uh, we both uh, were working very hard and and soon i had my first uh, uh, child the daughter shibani she was born and uh, uh, we decided that i think when we have a second child because uh, we were fond of children that then we should have our own home so that's why we and my husband we were really uh, working very hard and uh, very diligently so that i think we have our own home so very soon uh, i think uh, I, i was doing a very demanding job and and i think working very hard to get a home and very soon uh, we got our own home of course uh, we took a home loan and um, my immediately my when the uh, my second child that is my son was born now my mindset was like this that now i, uh, I think i got a now home uh, i got a two children uh, i want to now chill i don't want to now do a very uh, like a work in a very demanding uh, job because for some years i will be slowing down and uh, i want to enjoy my children i want to give best to my children and uh, uh, at the same time i want to have uh, my family um, like peace but looks like i think universe had some other plan so my husband uh, like um, is very ambitious also and he had a lot of dreams for um, to become a entrepreneur uh, so he was talking to me for a long time that i want i want to come be in entrepreneurship and all that thing and then i was listening to that yes good but i did not know that one day suddenly he'll come when i think i was playing with my child my son in the garden my child was very small just born i think one year uh, two years and he just told me that i think rajul i think i decided to quit my job and uh, i want to really become entrepreneur so i think uh, now you now that's what understood i think uh, there was a half sentence for me other half sentence i have to understood okay, what i have to do now so for a sort of minute it was a like a shock for me ke, like i always lo- all decided to have a different type of life i changed my job also because of that ke, now i'll not do a very demanding job for some years but i think i'll be with my children but i think then i my mindset again i changed yes i think he's got dreams i'm here to support his dreams and i think uh, because of entrepreneur life is like that i think he might be having ups and down tell uh, his settle and afterwards so then i have to take a financial responsibility of my family and i took that and there again mindset was i think i'd keep on hearing uh, from my mother from my uh, grandmother and lot of uh, women uh, who are progressive minded that that women uh, has to be a financially independent right so uh, i had that mindset you know now i think this is a ch- this is a, i think i have to be anyway financially independent because how to take a financial responsibility of my family and to take so that my husband can pursue his dreams and all the things 
so then i think why not then i do a uh, properly and smartly so i it took time to pivot to my mindset but then my mother and my grandmother i think the thanks to them always for supporting me and they say yeah rajal you can do it so then i just took up a very very uh, like a demanding job again and i think i was traveling up and down every month to like a usa and europe and my mother and uh, my grandmother used to take care of my two children which i was not liking it but i think uh, they were i think they were with me thank god and uh, then i decided that and even now i want to now uh, like uh, have a good life how to give to my children how to give a good life to my parents because i was brought up uh, me and my husband i think we have been brought up in a very lower middle class family even my children my, my parents have struggled a lot so i thought i'll give a best life to my parents how to give best life to my grandmother and to give best life to my children it was what i could not do in my life like i wanted to study and go in outside india uh, i couldn't do that so then i think i decided that i think made up my mindset differently i pivoted that then i decided to then earn more learn more when i learning about investment then i met uh, best advisors in uh, bombay and uh, i got a lot of um, um, like uh, hints from them i keep on learning about that and then i started investing and uh, uh, because of that i think uh, my uh, i had that then uh, uh, my children can go to the best uh, college and school outside india and everything i could do that which i could not do in my life so this was triggered me to really take charge of the financial management of my home and i feel today i do that and uh, now it's become a like art for me i love this art of uh, managing my uh, diversified uh, uh, portfolio i've been investing in all the asset class which sonal told you and i've been investing in a real estate in um, debt in uh, equity in a stock market in mutual fund i do investment in the gold and the metal the silver and also i think uh, i'm a fan of crypto a little bit so i invest in the crypto also so that is the way i think and i love doing my this art of uh, diversified portfolio management and uh, at the same time i must say that uh, this giving me a uh, financial freedom financial well being and financial security and i enjoyed spending daily at least 10 minutes average to just see how my portfolio has been doing even though i'm i have a hectic day but i always spend 10 minutes to just see daily how my portfolio is doing and then immediately if i do some reshuffling i think i decide on that so that is the first answer to questions um sorry answer to the question second is about i think what motivated uh, motivated me i think i just answered that third is about now did you face any challenges especially from your husband and others when you decided to take a financial decision that's a very tricky uh, question and i'll be very honest here that we are still living in a male dominated society so it's not very simple right sonal to just become uh, take a finance in my in my uh, like our charge even though i appreciated my husband's progress in mind he used to support me i think uh, like when because he wanted me to become a financially independent and um, whenever i think when i take a very 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 uh, demanding job like every month or say every 3 3 months i think i'll be staying outside the india for my um, uh, for my uh, job he used to support me support my children everything was that i think that was a fantastic on that but that time i was financially independent and but emotionally i was dependent on him so this equation was working because financially independent is the one thing but emotionally dependent is a different thing so my equation was my husband was financially dependent i was but emotionally dependent on him that worked so far that time so that thing there was no child there was not an issue on that and he was happy that i am taking care of the full financial responsibility of my home everything you don't have to worry about anything about the making a family homes about uh, my children's education about uh, running a home everything i have been doing and never a single money from him so that's the way i think uh, so good he was a good one now the second is about i really get a like a, a how other challenges i get from others that i'll must share with you that i think even not that time even till today i get a really really funny re- interaction or reaction from whenever i think i meet any uh, male who has got in charge of a, a financial uh, planning just to give example when i was working in atos so we used to have a uh, every six months i used to get a bonus shares and that is floating in the paris stock exchange so my my peers those also was to get this bonus shares they will never used to discuss with me how i'm going to now sell these shares or i'll buy these shares more because they thought 
my husband is taking a decision for that and they never used to ask me but i told them one day like i take my own decisions about this the shares but so if you to share with me is okay otherwise i used to ask my french boss uh, about directly i used to get advice from my french boss that's the way i used to manage again till today when i go to any my friends place any of my close friends when i go and then i think and the husbands are there sitting there so they can talk to me everything under the sun any topic and they are fine the moment it comes about the financial investment and if i'll tell them you know i think investment i think uh, uh, this is the best i'll not even uh, recommend or i don't even advise them but i just tell them you know i think if you are doing is i think uh, like what sonal is telling about i think i think you should focus on the asset allocations don't go for uh, just blindly by buying any stock because i think um, like without any um, uh, bottom up approach to get take a top down approach think strategically about the portfolio how much you do invest in each asset allocation how much i think your risk appetite is there then you come out think how much you invest in the which asset allocation which instruments are there even asset so that will give some ideas to them they like the idea they take the tips they get benefited i think they just tell uh, my friend yeah she's a then good advisor but suppose we still never to appreciate in front of me about what i am doing for the financial investment and till today i think i'm facing the same issue and that's very funny but that's i think a fact of life the sonal right so that's the way i think uh, i just see a uh, uh, like a uh, uh, other other people uh, reacting to me i'm taking charge of my financial uh, decisions and the uh, investments thank you very much um now i'll take a one question which is uh, um as from a very very junior person and um, she's been asking that um from your experience Uh, have you ever felt that you have invested in wrong place and wrong fund okay and my question this is a very good questions and the second question the same person asked me is that ever regretted in your investments so now i'll just answer first have you ever felt that you have invested in a wrong place and fund yes i have invested in a wrong place and a fund so whenever i used to take a decision by emotion i always invested in a wrong place and a wrong fund and whenever i think i used to take a very objective decision based on a education based on my knowledge based on i think objectively i never used to have a wrong place uh, or the wrong fund i'll just give an example uh, i was when shifted to baroda because i started to work remotely from my hometown that's why i shifted from bombay to baroda and that time 2008 was a time 2008 was a very bad time in india economy was very bad so i was i thought okay, let, let me just do some reshuffling of my portfolio and so i was asking like uh, advisors um, in the baroda and i had a fascination of working with a lady advisors so i was asking like um, who are the advisors that i think are in, in baroda and i think came to know about the 10 advisors and i met them also and uh, uh, somebody told me then why you are going to all this thing advisors then i met my school friend who was a advisor and i thought he's a school friend so this is a decision i have taken by emotion and i think i i asked him to just do my investment and he was uh, like a uh, not then i found out i think uh, he's not a right uh, person because uh, i cannot just uh, rely on him because of my emotion linking with him because he's my school friend that the first and i think a lot of thing are shifting at deep second i found a, i wanted to i just told you uh, like our lady advisor and i had a soft corner for a lady advisor i said no i think we should really have a so then i i talked to her and i think i consulted her and i think uh, uh, like uh, uh, advising started advising with uh, her but i found out i think uh, that professionalism i think is required and the knowledge required i think is not there and i think i lost met, met a, a lot of uh, um, Uh, wrong uh, uh, invested uh, in the wrong place and fund third i think when i used to invest in mutual as uh, directly in the stocks i'm again i think whenever i do a emotional um, decision like uh, i my favorite customer is my procter and gamble i worked with uh, procter and gamble for last say around 15 years and i was uh, always procter and gamble i have to buy stock and i think i used to make all buy a lot of stock of procter and gamble and i think uh, some of the like uh, uh, like uh, customers i work along the and uh, across the world and uh, like uh, cbnb paripas i'll i'll just uh, i'll just do that some of the like uh, uh, ing bank i work with them so i just used to buy a stock blindly i think uh, because i think i the emotional linking but i think i, I cannot do because png is going fi fine other may not be fine 
So now um, we are now stopping or we are going ahead. Namil uh, uh, Should I go ahead with this or should we stop it? Go, okay. Um, so uh, having said that, I think, uh, um, uh, so this is, a, I was regretted in your investments. Yeah, so a lot of time I have regretted in my investment until today. Now I don't regret because I do not take decision based on emotions. So I just keep emotions and business separately and I just, and I think I must say that I think even though during the Corona or even though uh, afterwards, I think I really made a good return on my investments, but it's a basically a total uh, average uh, return of my diversified portfolio. So that's why but I think I must say that I think I now I last uh, seven years, I have not taken any decision based on the emotion. Uh, then um, next question is about a very novice, very young girl. She's saying, from your experience, can you tell me, as I am new to investment, where should I invest first? And two, how do I know what investment is good for me? I think our Sonal is very beautifully and uh, very logically given this answer. So uh, I will not repeat that. Uh, that uh, can you tell me? Uh, uh, because you are a new in investment, Sonal gave a lot of tips here. And where should I invest first? Again, my um, like uh, uh, recommendation is that uh, uh, you just find out, I think, uh, what, are, what is your risk appetite is there? And you can undergo a survey for a risk appetite. That's a very beautiful survey comes for the risk appetite to know. And um, you can go for the survey. Then you know what is your risk appetite is there? How much you should invest in a, uh, in a, a debt and uh, then I uh, think equity. But being a uh, like young person, as the Sonal said, I think uh, better go for a more uh, equity. When I was young, of uh, around that age, I used to do almost 70% uh, equity and 20% real estate and 10% gold. When I was young, I think when I was, I think when I was in a, uh, my 30s, I used to do that. But now I think my, I'm now I'm just, I think I'm in my, uh, this, uh, after 20 years, I, my risk appetite is I think not that much. Then I do then 50% in the day, 40% in date, 40% in equity. I do then 10% in gold. And then I 10% in the, uh, sorry, for 0.5% in the crypto. And uh, I don't do now in real estate. So that is our uh, answer to that. But always go for a top down approach. And uh, then I think you invest on that. And I think Sonal gave a lot of tips here for the new investors. I think she did a fantastic job there. Uh, next question is that I think how you ever guided your children to invest? <laughs> I want to know as I want my children also to start investing. But I don't know where know where to invest. I think uh, uh, again, um, Sonal shared here uh, that I think uh, uh, anybody can uh, invest, and she gave a very good uh, tips on that. Anybody after 12 years of her age, or anybody who's got a uh, like a, a curious curious mind. And now you know that a lot of young boys and girls they are sitting and investing in crypto. The fantastic job they are doing, I, I, even though I think I will not do at this uh, age or I'll not do that, I think as, uh, fully in crypto, but they are doing, they are learning. And I think I tell you an example about my daughter. She wants to, now she's also, she's, a, she's an uh, artist. She's uh, doing an NFT. And for NFT, she's now working with a different, different type of crypto. So she's learning now to, uh, to the day trading. So how she can do NFT in different crypto. So depend upon uh, like uh, where you want to, like where you are in your uh, career, sorry, in your um, risk profile, what is your appetite? And depend upon that, you can start investing in that. But children can also use their piggy bank or even the, I remember my children when anybody used to give them money just from my grandmother or my mother-in-law or my father-in-law. So I used to keep in our money uh, and somewhere and that money, I'll never put touch, but we used to put in a, some investment. I used to do that. But uh, um, uh, have you ever guided? your children to invest i've guided is a different thing but implemented is a different thing i don't know they're implemented fully but i think i've guided them but i think i'm not now next question is about the what is the right age to invest i think i told you that it's i think around 12 years and or you got a, somebody and you're very curious mind they can invest i think um, anytime and uh, what's your opinion about including financial literacy in school or college fantastic question yes yes or no and I think, yeah, this is, I think, a very, very important uh, because uh, I always tell that our school system, education system, that teaches five subjects, even college, 
university uh, uh, syllabus they teach us five subjects but did not teach 95 subjects and 95 subjects is about how you are leading your life when you got tomorrow problem i think how you do how can you handle that sort of situation in life how can you be so resilient in life how can you really be happy in life what do you can do so these are all questions i think we not been taught in the college similarly if you want to become a financially well being financially secure financially very very free your freedom and i think this is a very good syllabus take to be taken in the school and especially i think for girl students i think uh, i i really I, that's maybe i think it is my personal view i think this is very important so i don't know who can uh, implement but yeah i agree with on that then what is the first step to start investing how should i start what's the minimum amount require uh, to be given for investment or what i can read to learn more that is also a question so what is the first step to start investing i think i would say that the first step to start investing is about the setting up the mindset i think i shared my own example i think uh, you require a different type of a mindset for investment and uh, without if you are not prepared to learn don't start investing because this is not a magic you have to really keep on learning and i believe that for this financial investment is a it's a journey we keep on learning learning and learning and i think even today after investment i think i'm doing for last 25 years daily i read or i think average weekly i learn something so even keep on learning and learning and learning so that's why if your aptitude is not for learning don't start investing right sonal you can just do a like a like a um, like i'll do here and again then you'll go by emotions the way the way i did it it's a it's a you cannot just investment do by the emotions so you have to and here you have to keep on learning and there are a lot of forums are there there are communities are there that you can join and you can also learn like there's a community call wealth on uh, women on wealth wow now this platform is a community where you can they really teach you about the money gym that you teach you from initially this is only for women and there they really have a community i think there they got every week there are talks are there and they'll uh, teach you about uh, everything uh, of investment allocation uh, um, asset allocation everything or that the money control also is there i think there also there are a lot of tutorials are there even zeroda if you do invest in i think in a in a stock market Zeroda, I think, is a very good platform where not it's not very expensive. Also, very good tutorials are there in Zeroda, and you can start investing in the stocks. Um, even for crypto, if you want to invest, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, like uh, sites are there. I think you can, you can learn what is crypto is about. So what I'm telling, I think, if you got decided to learn, then only uh, go for investment, and then afterwards you set up your mindset. Then you just go the same sequence. You go on asset allocations. You do your risk profiling. your which assets are there i think and either you go and meet any good advisor and learn and i think but again you have to have your own um, uh, education uh, and the knowledge to even before you go to advisor even after to go to advisor because it's your hard earned money so what is to be reviewed with the advisor how advisor is advising you you don't can't take it 100% uh, on anybody because it's your own money uh Yes. Uh, just I'll ask the last question. I think, and then I think Sonal will take that. I, I got a lot of questions, but I am not asking. I'm last question. I'm um, answering about the crypto. Then I'll Sonal will do that uh, because crypto. So one the question is about the crypto, and I'll just say that. Uh, uh, yeah, like uh, the question is that I think I am not a techno savvy, and I would like to now do uh, investment in the crypto. Uh, what are your thoughts about that here i would say that like uh, fortunately i am also a technologist and uh, you know that crypto is got a two types one is a private crypto and the public crypto now private crypto is a token built on a public blockchain blockchain is a technology now this technology by this we are uh, like building the block um, tokens so private cryptos are built on a private blockchain 
while public crypto are built on a um, public blockchains. So my again personal view is that never go by private crypto because uh, that are they are not transparent. What's happening? Nobody knows about that. That's risky. But that's my personal opinion. So if you do go for investment in the crypto, just and crypto every day new new currencies are keeps on coming. So we don't know which currency to really invest because then the thing is stabilized so far. There is no regulation is done so far. So like for me, my investment, I think I just done only five zero percent uh, of my total portfolio in crypto. Only one currency, uh, which is a was it is on a uh, public uh, crypto. So don't go by. Uh, private crypto and I think uh, uh, go for a crypto which is a uh, currency is little stabilized and you can see transparently what's happening about the all the transactions. That's so which way I'll now hand over to Sonal uh, to answer a uh, few questions. If, and if you got any more questions, uh, please uh, email ID is given by Janet uh, in the chat box. So write all questions on the email ID and uh, we'll be happy to reply all those questions through that email ID. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rajal. That was absolutely a superb journey of, uh, like, you know, from the beginning, how you really shared it with us. It was, it was really, really good. And, you know, of course, you, you know, each woman, I think, goes through this uh, phase of, uh, like, you know, from uh, being independent and empowered and all that. I will quickly take up the question. There is one question which says, that I have always found that investment advisor do send portfolio updates, fund ups and downs, but I am still not understanding how fast is there liquidity to withdraw from a particular fund if you need, if you are in need of money. So this is the first question. Then second, she is asking, is it a complex procedure? And third, she is asking, should I try this process once? Like surrender some units and see how to do this process. And at the end of the day, it is only for liquidity and not for profit or anything else. Okay, so here is my answer. Uh, it's, it's really good. Your advisor is sending you regular portfolio updates and uh, uh, like, you know, how the portfolio is moving and all. I'll tell you certain very quick uh, answers. First of all, if it is mutual fund portfolio, then your liquidity is very easily available. If it is an equity-based mutual fund, and if you redeem it today, the funds will be in your account on the fourth day. So it is absolutely liquid, but yes, four days is the time taken for the same. Secondly, I would also suggest that, okay, how complex is the procedure? It's very, very simple. You just have to do a redemption. You can basically, if your advisor is giving you an online platform, you can redeem it online or else you just have to uh, sign a redemption uh, slip and hand it over and the money will be in the account on the fourth day. Secondly, uh, I would also suggest that for your emergency purpose, which I also mentioned earlier, that you should actually have an emergency corpus which is separate, which you know you can actually invest in a fixed deposit or maybe a debt mutual funds, your returns are almost the same there. Uh, in debt mutual funds, if you redeem today, the funds are there in your account tomorrow. It is a 24 hour window and fixed deposit is also something similar. You know, you just need to go to your bank, online banking and uh, do the, uh, I mean, break the FD and get the amount. So emergencies, it should you should actually have a separate fund. So this I thought was an uh, important uh, question that I'll answer. And uh, there is just one more question which I would like to take it up and I think it's time to uh, finish. Is that, you know, how, I mean, and I think Rajal did mention a lot about how newcomers can invest. There is one question which was about senior citizens. You know, that where should 
uh, senior citizen invest if they want uh, low risk and high returns well my question my answer is see there is nothing like low risk and high returns honestly speaking but what should be done is that low risk and high returns you know should actually be divided invest for a senior citizen at least invest you know up to 70 percentage of their money in very very safe investment options like all the government schemes that i mentioned uh, pradhan mantri vaya vandana yojana it has a 15 lakhs limit then another 15 lakhs limit is there for senior citizen saving schemes once you finish this uh, investment then remaining 20 to 30 percent you can take a little bit risk and invest into uh, a balanced fund or a balanced advantage category in balanced advantage what happens is that uh, they they move the, the the fund manager it's a mutual fund uh, the fund manager they move the money between debt and equity uh, as per the market condition so your protection is much better and over a longer period of time like 3 years and above you can make money which will be more than fixed deposits so i think it should be a combination of this two for uh, senior citizens and again as per the risk appetite and uh, all that but yeah it can be used as a thumb rule so thank you very much bma and uh, bma committee and um, to everyone this it was uh, it was i i felt extremely good sharing whatever knowledge and thoughts that i had and i hope that you know all of you will feel little bit more confident and little bit more empowered and seeing rajal's journey i think all of us are really charged up to really understand more i think i really like that point that try and understand every uh, aspect and then uh, do the investments thank you very much thank you ladies for your patience and thank you for being with us i hope that you are now empowered at least enough to start investing and uh would reach out to us with any of your queries we'd love to hear from you and uh, we hope to come up with many more such women empowered women centric type of events so and have a great 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 weekend so stay healthy stay blessed and stay empowered women okay bye bye hello so thanks for your time today and uh, saturday afternoon and uh, as i mentioned to you like uh, our women's committee we are very honest about our uh, what you want to achieve by this program so even 1% of uh, ladies joined in this program can be oriented towards financial investments that would be great achievement for uh, in the women committee and for us and uh, uh, if you got any questions uh, email is given in the chat box please uh, ask questions in the email and we'll answer you and hope to invite you again for our second series where how you can become a pro in investment we are planning that and uh, very soon uh, we can do that and uh, one day i think uh, one of you can come here and give presentation on that so thank you very much for attending this and thank you dipak bhai president thank you nimil bhai vice president and i must thank my rain maker team of uh, women's committee and my core team fantastic like uh, they did a like they really really i think uh, uh, did a fantastic job and sumesh and the secretary i think sumesh come here you are tall so you can be seen here aaja aaja piche everybody please come i think uh, and uh, this is a uh, like uh, we and the sonal i think for spending her time on the saturday So thank you for everybody for that. Please come, Deepak Bhai. I will come. Deepak Bhai, Vinil Bhai, Sumesh. Hey, Sumesh, please come. No, no. I think you are the supporter. Sumesh, please. I think it's your very contribution. Hai. Sumesh, please. You have to come. And where is the Pushkar Ji? Anyway, Ashish Bhai, please come. Come first. 
Okay. Okay, thank you very much. We are closing now this uh, session program and uh, bye bye to everybody. Have a nice weekend.